Hi, welcome to Nancy Jean's Garden. It's my usual Tuesday time and it's the day after the eclipse. And where I live, we had um, four minutes and 28 seconds of totality in the, in this, um, in the eclipse. And it's, I really enjoy watching the run up to it as everything gets grayer and grayer and the light changes. And, um, I watched one last October on, on the same front porch. Uh, and, um, it was, that's where I saw the blue light coming out of the eclipse. That was just before that lady showed up, uh, Nancy, uh, Rebecca showed up on, um, Pam Gregory saying that she'd had this thing about this blue light coming in. Well, I saw it. I, except I couldn't, I thought first I thought of my eyes were playing tricks on me. And then when I took the glasses off and put the glasses back on, I was just looking around. There was no blue light. The only one, only way I saw it was when I was looking up. Um, no big, huge uh, blue light thing this time. Um, actually it was very calm but I am going to put up a question that someone put in here early. Susie Hatcher said she had a terrible reaction to everyone else's reaction to the energy of the eclipse. She has a migraine today. And that is one of those things that can happen to you. Um, I don't get migraines in particular, but I will have things seem to sort of go awry in my body and not feel well. The worst for me is my breathing gets screwed up. And that really can be from taking in so much energy and not really being able to control it. Um, if you didn't see the show on Saturday, it was on Dr. Gail's Starseed channel, along with Terry from Holding Your Space. It's a topic that I've spoken to both of them about also. It's all wonderful for us to tell you to go out and try it out and be part of all these wonderful things and participate in the world that way. But then it's a whole nother kettle of fish. If you do run into, what do you do if you need help? If you need to, if you get feelings, you don't really understand and how to protect yourself so you don't get those. Doing what I've done for so long, every single day, I build up protection. That doesn't mean it always works, but it means I'm not bringing back bad stuff into my life. So Susie, what you can do, you can go and really just get calm and pull yourself. You have the power to pull yourself out of this energy also. This eclipse really was about healing parts of our own soul, not helping anybody else through it, not seeing blue light coming down for the rest of the universe for everyone to take a bath in, not seeing the other energetic changes that are happening around us. So... Uh, I don't know that that helps you much, Susie, but just really trying to relax and understand it's nothing permanent and it, it comes and goes. And um, we have, you know, I, I hope you get feeling better. You know, sometimes when things are shaking stuff up inside us, it's not always easy to accept. You know, I, I one time point, um, is uh, I, I realized I was at a point where I was just really, really happy and joyful. And I realized there lot, I started beating myself up immediately. And uh, because I said, you could have made yourself this happy. Well, no, a lot of things had to happen for me to understand how to be that happy at that point. The one thing I did do is I remembered that sense of joy and I try to bring that in as much as I can. We did have some comments. Um, we did have some people who asked questions, but before we get to those, um, we only had four and um, I wanted to um, show you some things. Um, this, I found some crystal compasses and I'm going to put them up on the screen and explain what they are so that you can kind of understand what I'm talking about. 
these are crystal compasses. And the reason I invented crystal compasses, it was before COVID and I used to sell these out in shops. And it was so that when people wanted to have a big grid, this is a grid I built this weekend right after the eclipse. And it's getting mailed out today because it's finally all fixed. And if you don't know about my grids, every stone that's on there is documented. So you know what it's for and why it's in the form. And it also comes with a letter on how to fire it up and a wand to fire it up. But <clears throat> not everybody could afford one of those. Or did they want one? And how do you carry this around with you all day to get stuff? So I came up with the three most common things I was asked for. I was asked for Art of the Heart, which has a rose quartz, a sodalite, and an amazonite. And it tells you what each of them is for. It says, um, it tells you how to set them up. Each one of these comes with a small fluorite. You put it in the middle and you can build a little grid. You can put it on your desk. You can put it on your personal altar. But this one happens to be affixed because what happened is I thought I'd sold all of these and I wasn't going to make any more. So I'd taken them off my website and I went to my hairdresser and he had sold about a hundred of them for me. Um, I, I think I gave him like, well, anyway, I went to get my hair cut on Saturday and he lets me know that he's found a whole drawer full. So there's about seven or eight of each one of them. And I've posted them up on my website for sale. And when you get one, you get like, this is, this is art of the heart. This is crystal cash. And this is for people who want abundance. And it's got a pyrite, a green adventurine and a piece of citrine. And it's got its little fluorite, which is your focal crystal in it. And it also tells you how to do this. And the other one is body and soul. And in the body and soul, there's a bronzite crystal. There's a blue appetite and a yellow calcite and, and a little fluorite crystal. And it tells you how to fire it up, how to deal with it. You get it in this little baggie. You can keep it in the little baggie or you can, uh, the little bag, sach, sachet or whatever you call these kind of little funky bags. Or you can just carry one or two of them in your pockets. Um and so I have a very limited number of those available right now because I've already invested in them. They're done. Uh, if you go to my website, which is crystal. No, that's the wrong one. No, I already did it. Okay. Um, you'll be able to find um, the, the link. There's a place called... Um, shop up in the corner if you click on shop you can find them there and um so that's kind of a new little bonus thing that showed up um they're forty dollars uh because i have to mail them and all that stuff guys um if i i've when i did these there was a period of time another thing i did was I, uh, I also used to do readings and then at the end of my normal reading, I'd pick a stone or two that matched where you were if, if that, if it was appropriate to that reading. I mean, not every reading ends up with a crystal. Um, sometimes they're just ideas, but uh, I'm thinking about putting that in and I do know that if I do, I'm going to start six month readings again, and I only do them from June to, to December. And it's the same as a year reading, but it's just the next six months. And the next six months ought to be really interesting because this eclipse really triggered off a lot of change, personal change, change to our own selves. Um, but you're also seeing it around the world. I don't know if y'all been, since we've had the, we were all looking up at the eclipse, but Italy's volcanoes are starting up again. Uh, Mount Etna off Sicily is really spewing out all kinds of stuff. Is it, is it Etna? No, it's Stram Stromboli that's off of Sicily. Mount Etna, which is near the Bay of Naples, it's actually blowing smoke rings. It's absolutely fascinating. You can find the video of it. It, it 
it puffs and it like blows these smoke rings up into the sky. That's happening. And you know, if you're on the East Coast, you know, you had a little earthquake of your very own. They had one on the West Coast, which wasn't as bad as some have been on the West Coast, but things are moving and rumbling and tumbling. And there's a lot of astrologers who think it has a lot to do with Mercury, you know, it has a lot to do with Uranus and Jupiter coming together. And so it's going to be kind of interesting to watch out for that sort of stuff. But on a, this eclipse was not what's causing those earthquakes. This eclipse was a personal uh, journey for each and every one of us. And I saw a couple things when I was watching it, and I felt a few ways. I've never been in totality before. That was fun, um, but it. I think it's a fun thing for us to look at and a fun thing for us to play with, but uh, it may be time for us to just work on ourselves. And in keeping with that, the first questions I got today came from me, me, me. I need to cope with new changes in my life. Any suggestions? I think I need more coping skills. Well, I don't have my instant packet of things you can do, but I do know one thing you can do if you feel like your life's in a lot of change, and especially right now when we've gone through this eclipse, I have a thing I do every day, and the, I sit at my desk and I just say, uh, I just think of a word. And I, I mean, sometimes they make like no sense. Sometimes they make great sense. And I write a few sentences around it. Sometimes I write a paragraph, not much more than a paragraph because that's about all I got in me early in the morning. But when I go back now through the calendar and it's, it's in a book that has like calendar pages. So I know which day I wrote things. You can start to see a pattern forming If you just open yourself up to that possibility, that might be one way to do it. Another I know a lot of people who will pull an oracle card. They'll pick a deck they're going to use that month and they'll pull a card a day from that and think about what that message triggers off for them. Uh, sometimes it doesn't have to be any of the kind of more formal oracle cards like cards like um, this is the one that I was using to make that grid and that's from uh, the um, the chakra deck that I use to do that but there also some there are some decks I've got this one and I should have had it over here and I knew I was going to talk about this and I was uh, not prepared but <clears throat> there's a thing called the impact deck and I I don't own any I don't even know if it's still out there but what it's got is it's got three different kinds of question uh, three different kinds of cards and you can look at them and they have reflections and it says it on the back of the card. It's reflections and it says, what does strong mean to you? It just gives you some thoughts because sometimes I sit at my desk and I get totally uh, blank. It also has actions in the deck and the action it says, uh, commit to a problem that's been bugging you for a while. Give yourself a timeline. And I don't always do all of them, but I think about them. And it does trigger me off to write about several things. And then, then the ones, there's also cards in here. There's three kinds of cards. There's affirmations. And this one said, um, I am comfortable expressing my uncomfortable emotions. And those are just things you can you can add into your day, and it may be something you never even thought about doing. And these these cards were developed by people who wanted to help create a more motivational sort of impact, and that's who made these. And it some of the actions are like pay it forward, find some way during that day you can pay it forward for someone, but that might help you open your mind up to ways you never thought about looking at something because that's when I got these cards that's what they did for me they made me think and see things a little differently 
and they're not all sometimes I, I have trouble pulling tarot uh, as a motivational thing because uh, tarot cards are, are I've been playing with them since I was 12 and they're just a bazillion thoughts rush into my head from tarot so I try to find something that sort of helps um, move me that way that and I hope that helps you Mimi me but really if you're really really looking for a set of coping skills find a good reader I'm a good reader but you know find a reader you would like to go to and see if they'll ask them if they could help uh, coach your spirit I do that for several different people. Um, I have a lady that I read for all the time, and and I try not to read for people too often, but I'm part of her story now, so that's how it kind of works. And But find a reader or find a, a program or find something on YouTube where someone says five things that can maybe help change your life. Just open yourself up to that. And if, if you're listening to it and you're going, hey, that's a bunch of BS, then don't do that one. You'll find one you like. Oil painter. Wonderful photo. That's the photo. That photo that I put on as the lead for this show that shows the moon and the sun like that, that's from NASA. Um, I don't know how they put it together. I don't know how they did it. But there's also one that I got from NASA. And it was in an airplane that was really high up. And you can see the curvature of the Earth. And you can see the full eclipse next to the curvature of the earth. There's a lot of really cool photos on NASA. My own son took a really cool picture. I found this inexpensive lens thing to cover his phone so he could take it without burning up his phone. And he got a beautiful, uh, complete totality. It's really nice one. You see the corona and all the stuff. It's really cool. Uh, but that's when she's saying wonderful photograph, that's what she was saying. And it says, can we give ourselves permission to come to begin with a clean slate? Absolutely. You just have to decide that's where you're going. You need to kind of, that one you might want to have spend a little more time on goals and affirmations and things for yourself. But if oil painter, if you didn't see it, Dorothy Morgan also commented and she said, absolutely. We can always decide I'm going to leave what's behind me behind me. I'm going to understand why it was there and move on. I'm not going to dwell on it anymore. And then now the next one's going to make everybody in the room go nuts because I don't do politics. I'm going to do these things. I got this earth mama really liked the photo that was intro to this show. And so did Janet. So now we're going to go to the stuff I know about that. And this is a political answer. It's about politics. And I, the reason I'm going to do it is, could I please explain, explain rank choice voting? Rank choice voting is a voting system. It's a different kind of electoral system. Usually you go in, you put all your, everybody votes. And in some states, the majority wins, whether it's under 50% or not. In Texas, it has to be 50% plus one to win a race. That's that's across the whole state. So, and this voting system was designed to, one, give people more choices of what they want to see, and two, it's a, if a candidate wins a pure majority, 50% plus one, in the first round of votings, then they're declared the winner. If no candidate wins the majority of first preference votes, the candidates with the fewest first preference votes are eliminated. Those, those people are taken off the ballot. And uh, lifting the second, and so if I went in and I'm going to show you this ballot, it'll make it a little bit easier, I think. Okay. I'm going to take your thing because it kind of occurs. Okay. On this, this is the Alaskan ballot for the House of Representatives last time. And I got this off Ballotpedia. You can go there. What happened on this was she didn't make 50%. You can see she made 48.7%. Um, this was her vote count. Uh, and votes exchanged. I'll explain that. And then Sarah Palin was running against her. And she got 25%. And then... The guy closest to Sarah Palin got 23%. And then this guy, 
Chris Bai got 1.9%. And they were actually on the ballot, but they also had a whole string of people that were write-ins to get one, two, and three little votes. So what happens is they count your votes and then they see who's below the lowest vote getter and they redistribute um, he they redistributed votes up to him. In other words, he got the majority of people who didn't vote, they didn't vote for either of these two. So his got put into here and that was his total vote. So what happens is then they go to the Chris by ballots and see who was the second preference. Who was the second person? Who's the second person they ranked? And what they found was that uh, those votes got redistributed up to him. Now, now we're going to go to the second round of votes to see if, if the second, if they look at everybody's second preference, if it gets Mary Peltola above 50%. So what happened to Mary was when they went and counted what everybody of the ones that were below them, when they counted their second ballots, their second choices on their ballots, Mary Peltola got 7,477 second choices. Sarah Palin got um, 43.072. And since this guy was the low vote getter, they redistributed his votes. That's what you see up here. The 64,000 was made up of his, the people who picked their second choice was Sarah Palin or Mary. Well, enough of them picked Mary that she made it to 55% and she won. And what's what this balloting type, this style, your state has to be geared to ready to be ready to do it. You understand that you get to vote for a first, second, and it's first or second choice. I don't think they go beyond, I don't think they go into threes. I've never seen a ballot. I suppose on Ballotpedia, where I got this information from, if you go there, it'll show you what that ballot looked like. But what it does is it means we don't have to have runoff elections. Texas is infamous for having runoff elections. And um, and so and that means everybody has to go back to the polls. This way, you go to the polls once, and eventually they're going to keep rolling these numbers till somebody gets to 50% plus one. And there's a huge hue and cry uh, when that, election happened because a lot of people in Alaska said, we don't understand what it is. Well, they'd been explaining it, explaining it. And I really, it, it's kind of like if you, if there's two candidates, you say, well, this is my first choice, but this person's not so bad. Uh, you can choose them, but honest to God, go look that up in Ballotpedia. There must've been 20 people. Most of them were write-ins on that ballot. And um, it's, but it works. It just takes a little longer to, to compile what the answer really is. Um, and, and anyway, it stops Sarah Palin from going to the House of Representatives. So that's all I have to say about that. Now I'm going to go back into comments. And you're going to have to give me a second here. Um, hi to everybody. Hi, Angla. I don't know if many of you are aware of it, but there was a school shooting in, in Finland, and it was a child who went in with a gun and shot three students, killed two of them, and seriously wounded the other. He stole a neighbor's gun or something like that. And their reaction wasn't, uh, it was video games or anything else. Their reaction was, how can we stop this bullying? How can we, because apparently the kid had been bullied. Um, Angela, I hope that's all working out for you. Are you on the phone? Somebody? I'm on my show. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have a wandering child. Yeah. Su okay. Susan said, this. she said um, she tried to laugh off the, the headache, but she was exhausted after work. I find exhaustion is one of the things that energy drains happen to me. And that's when you just have to kind of get away from other people and other influences and go inside yourself and finding a grounding rock would be great if you're in that situation. But like I said, I've never had a migraine. Don't want one. Thank you universe. Not a blessing I need. And 
And, oh, I presume they're saying New Madrid, Missouri had several last Friday. I presume she's saying rumbly, tumbly little earthquakes because New Madrid's on that fault. And um, oh, okay, book bewitched. Um, I got up in the morning and I like I was so ready. I had my "Hello Darkness, My Old Friend" T-shirt on. I had my little glasses already. I had my Solar Eclipse magazine that they were selling in the grocery stores here. Very well put together. It was put together by a science group uh, explaining all about it and a lot of history about um, eclipses. So, and I had a lens to put on my cam on my camera on my phone, but I'm not that steady holding it. So I, all I got was you would have thought Dr. Gale was coming down out of the sky with the pictures I took, but the, um, and what else did I have? Oh, and a friend showed up on Friday from out of town who was here to see the eclipse and she had, through a series of weird things, I ended up with a, a thing that celebrated the whole solar eclipse, and it said Nancy on it. It said, Nancy is at the thing, except it said Fort Worth, because that's where she's from. I was not in Fort Worth. I was in Dallas. But I got up in the morning. My daughter and I, my daughter took a day off from work so she could just kind of be here, and, and we could look at it together. It's very cool. You can... The second the moon starts cutting into the sun, the light outside changes. It gets very, it gets gray. I mean, it's still bright, but it's not like the kind of bright you're used to here. And so I sat out and I watched the whole crossing into the sun. It's very cool when, um, when it finally goes into totality, the first thing you see are these beads. And that's what they call them, bright, Braden's bees, I do believe. They're named after a scientist who sort of pointed them out. And what they are is it's where sun, since the moon isn't like just a super flat little thing, it's where sunlight kind of scooches around some of the rougher parts of the, uh, the rough edge of the moon. And then it just sits there. And, and we were having low clouds kind of come in and go out. That was also interesting, watching the clouds go over the eclipse when you're watching the sun being eclipsed. And then when the moon breaks away and you're, it's, it's, it's the smallest bit off the sun, it's called the diamond ring, and it looks like a big diamond on the back of it. Um, I didn't notice the temperature change that much, but it was almost 80 degrees anyway. And I'm not used to sitting out in the sun. And I, I sat out in the sun and I was really kind of afraid because I couldn't find my skin cream that stops me from getting rashes from the sun. But I didn't get a rash. So, you know, that was good. Uh, I went out and talked to Hogarth, my tree. And he said, it's all starting. So that's always lovely when Hogarth tells you that. And he won't tell you what's starting. He just said, it's all starting. So you don't know what the it is. Um, I was, I didn't see the blue lights like I saw last October in the other most, uh, 90% eclipse that we had, but I felt much calmer. I didn't feel like a whole lot was happening behind it. I felt like it was calming and it was saying it's time to work on. And I got clearly the message. It's time to work on yourself and do the things you want to do which is why I'm trying to change up how I do some of my readings and some of the services that I offer. But the totality is a different thing. That's the first time I'd ever been in totality. I've been in some partial ones before, but that was weird. That was really weird and very dark. I mean, it's hard to say because I live in a community that's well lit at night. And as soon as it hit uh, getting to be almost dark, it, all of our say security lights and they're they're not ugly security lights they're like lights up the building and stuff but we're there so that i hope that helps your book 
at Bewitched and let's see, I saw another one. Okay. May I have a reading on how the eclipse will affect my next six months? I usually have bad reaction to eclipses, but yesterday was mellow. Bridget, go with what you felt during that day. Um, I'll do a quick reading for you on your next six months. I'm going to do it with cards. Um, but if you, if it's like I said, I the time in October, I knew I was getting some weird messages. Then I found out about the whole blue light effect, but I didn't have anything like coming in on us from that. It was like, where do you want to go? What do you want to see happen? And if you were mellow, hang on to mellow. I'll take mellow over free any day. And it's not that we're not having a Mercury retrograde. My daughter was fortunate she took yesterday off because Saturday her transmission started giving her problems and we had it towed into the garage that we normally have our thing in Monday morning. And they called her and said, uh, it's the transmission, honey. And this is the transmission place we think you should have it towed to. So today was towing it to the transmission company. So it's not like our life's all mellow and sweet here, but nobody got panicked and we're not going to freak about it. Okay. Oh, dear girl. <laughs> I should have such cards. Your first card is Ace of Money. Money's coming in. Love is coming into your life. No wonder you felt mellow. And it's a partner who is generous and kind and like King of Cups time. And you're going to get to be your bright, insightful self. And the thing you need to watch out for is you got temperance upside down as your closing card. Uh, so much good stuff's going to come into you all at once and you need to handle it with temperance. Your first thing is going to be, whoa, I'm overwhelmed. You're not going to be overwhelmed. You have the strength to handle it. But you got great stuff coming. Let's see. Yeah, that's true. The cultos, they're trying to get rid of rank choice. People, did, people really didn't understand it. And the other problem was... Um, if you added everything up, Sarah Palin would have been a lot closer. I don't know who this the guy Nicholas Begich was, but he came close to Sarah Palin. I think, I think people in Alaska are tired of Sarah, Sarah too. So, I mean, I if running campaigns, I think I'd much rather run a ranked choice campaign, especially because if you've never done a runoff, you have usually four weeks to do it from the time that your race is run. And so you have to do what you've spent nine or 10 months doing. You have to do it in a month. Now, granted, you have the base of people you've built on, but you know, it's hard enough to get them to go out once, much less twice. So I would much rather do ranked choice. I've never run a ranked choice race myself. Yeah, Madrid is called Madrid in the U.S. It's not called Madrid. <laughs> That's insane. Yep, yeah, Rose Blues in Texas, and she wore all that stuff, welding goggles, riding goggles, and, and uh, dilated lens things. That'll do it. Okay. It would, okay, somebody says our, it could stop gerrymandering because, you know, but it's really going to make it plain when it's, it's a place where you have a lot of candidates running that it really helps. And they are called Bailey's Beads. Thank you. I just blanked. I was not a science major. I was a theater major. Um... And people are talking about all the places where they saw it, and it's very pristine. Uh, 
I watched a show where they were in a zoo in Toronto and they'd invited people to come and pick an animal and observe what it does during the eclipse. This was kind of an interesting thing. A lot of people wanted to watch the wolves. They thought they'd ha ha howl at the moon, but they didn't. But the giraffes did sort of tend to run around and not like it much. Did I feel different vibes? That's a bad question for me because I feel vibes all the time. So, no, I felt calm. I did not feel, as opposed to in October, I was, I had a lot of anticipation after I saw the blue light. And then I found out within 48 hours what it was. I didn't see anything like that. I did have a small cascade of little sort of asterisk sort of stars fall out, but I'm not sure that's not in my head. And um, it, it just felt like it. Um, oh, my new background, that's blue. That's because it's blue bonnets here. There are whole hill, there's m mounds of hills in Texas that look like that. Everybody's posting their obligatory blue, bo blue bonnet pictures with their kids. Mm, let's see. A lot of people are feeling mellow. Good. Okay, the eclipse reading for the next two months for Mad Who. Um, there's going to be some good changes around you. You're going to get out of a lot of stress and pressure. Uh, you are not going to achieve the goal that you really want to work on. You need to put that a little further out. There's still some things within your family that need to be settled right now. But then the good stuff shows up because all of a sudden an opportunity you thought was lost is going to be found and come find you under that tree and throw, throw it on you. And the five, this is the five of pentacles, which is those people wandering past the church. But in this case, it's reversed. And when I get that card in a reading, it means I'm going to finally be meeting and connecting with the people that I've been meeting to connect with. So I think that's going to be what's going on around you. Probably not this month, but by June, you're going to see a lot of changes. Okay. Okay. I felt a sense of relaxation during the clips. Quick reading on that as well. Let's see, what am I going to pull? I'm going to pull from my lunar oracle cards. I think that'll be quicker. You can see how organized I am. I have to go get everything. My arms are not as long as Danny Shay's. And I can't, good Lord, can't get those cards out. There, they are. there we go. Okay. They're just jammed. I have these little holders and some of the decks fit into them much more nicely than others. Okay. Oops. My chair is making noises, you know. Okay, this is Yasmin Boland's Moonology. I think I'm going to pull from that. I was thinking when I was reading these that that might be a more appropriate deck. Mm -hmm. see. Ooh, 
And it says for you right now, communication is the key. And let me... The only thing I don't like about this deck is the book that translates the cards for you. That's the moon in Gemini. Uh, you have to look it up by the title and then go find the page. She didn't have the hoots, but well, she may not have been able to when she was laying the cards out. Sometimes the books aren't printed and they're not ready, but it's a real pretty image. Um, a tune with the moon. Write a list of all the people you love the most and and see if you're prioritizing them. Are you taking care of the people that really care for you? Additional meaning to this card. Tell Time to tell someone how you really feel. Don't be all in your own head and not in your heart. Someone's flirting with you and you may not be noticing. So this exercise may help you. And it says to open your mind with more books or more or seeking out information that really interests you. And um, the whole thing of this card is communication. Communicating to the people you want to uh, be with, Jen. And if you are if you felt very relaxed, it might be a good time for you to do that because it's not easy to prioritize people when you're tense. Uh, we're going we're gonna to use a pendulum for you. Celtic seer. <clears throat> Come on. Uh, da -da. My chains got all mixed up, so we're going to. It's going to come out okay. Just got to get the tiger's eye out of there. There you go. I need to quit carrying two pendulums in the same sack, especially because one of these has a really bad chain for linking up wrong. Let's see what we got going on. Mm -hmm. This is not great YouTube, watching a woman untangle a chain. It's it's messed, guys. It's really. Ta-da. I think this may be it. This may be the pull that gets the whole thing free. Mm -mm. Almost, almost, almost. I did find a new show I like to watch, guys, and I'll tell you about it. Okay, if you if you have YouTube, uh, look up a show. It's a British show. It's called The Bidding Room, and people bring in items, and people evaluate them, and then they buy them from them in this room. It's really interesting. Okay, that's not helping Celtic Seer get a job. Remember, away from me is yes, and sideways is no, and I'm going to do Celtic Seer. Going to get a job soon. Yep. You're going to get a job pretty soon. It's it's not exactly straight. So there's a little more time. And I know when you're working on that, it's a real pain. But it's going to be the one you want because I feel like that's why it's been avoiding you. And you probably don't want to find it until after the end of this month because Mercury's retrograde. But you know all about that Celtic Seer because she knows her astro astrology. Yeah, Celtic Seer also got headaches from the from this the eclipse. Oh, so another person. Most of the day I was thinking about heading energy. By bedtime, her whole body was vibrating. Well, I hope you got some sleep. Okay. Cold Toes was filling us in on She Knows, one of the guys that was on 
one of the guys that ran against Sarah Palin. Yep, and we got people who are Blue Bonnet fans from Texas. Okay, we're going to let a message from your guides for Vernie with speaking through the moon deck. Okay, you got, when I pulled it, I thought I pulled one card, I pulled two. And I pulled New Moon and Aries, which is exactly what we just watched, <laughs> along with Don't Let Pride Get In Your Way. So we're going to look at, see what we can find about them. Full Moon, New Moon. I think the moons are fascinating. And, you know, um, that's one of the reasons why I love having Dorothy on. She's very, very into. She's very, very into all the lunar cycles and how to work with them. And I think that's, that's a very valid approach if you're looking for a way to systematize your life. Okay, your new moon in Aries. It's attuned to the moon. Don't ever think about giving up. Do your best and be happy with that. Avoid being brash right now, Bernie. Uh, you need to be drawing up a 12-month plan so you can move forward. Um, a new male may be coming into your life. That's one of the things she says happens when you pull this card. And it because Aries is the first sign, it's a sign of new things coming. And we're going to look at you got, the other card that, Pulled with it was the full moon in Leo. And one of the reasons I like to use the books, well, I like to use the books if I find that they're relevant when I read through them, when I get decks, is because they've put a lot of time and effort into this, and I like to honor the authors of the books for the time they spent. Now, here's your uh, full moon in Leo. Be magnificent. Um, and it says you need, your self-esteem is good, but vanity is not. So when you're being good, you understand it. Everyone is equally important. Creative urges must be followed, but, and with those you can work magic. And this, the Air, Aries said a man might be coming into your life. This says a friend may be leaving from your life, right? A friendship may be coming to an end. When the full moon comes into Leo, it can be a wonderful, bright time when people feel more confident and show more of their own talents to the world. So you're being told to come up with a 12-month plan. You may have a man coming into your life. And I think you're, you're beginning to understand, Bernie, that you have some uh, friends that are maybe that you're, you're either outgrowing them or... You don't just need their influence on your life right now. Okay. My moon, we're going to pull a card for you. Like I said, this, this eclipse was one to change us on my... To change us... Uh, personal level it's i mean we're gonna feel it if you open yourself up to it so we're gonna see what did your guards say about that ah new moon in pisces contemplate and meditate um, i have two piscean children and they they're not a challenge, but they are a challenge. I mean, they're not like a hideous challenge, but they're very, very spiritual. One even has a 22 life path just to make sure it's extra fun. Uh, use your own feelings to guide you on your way. Don't 
Always look to what seems logical. Don't fall into your mind. Listen to your heart. Face your fears. They may be holding you back. This situation is being healed for you. It's time to surrender to the divine and chant. Om Namo Narani. And I don't chant. So that's like probably the worst interpretation of that. Find a chance. Find something that you can that you can sell your mind into that will calm you down. Avoid being deceptive or being willingly deceived. So this is a time. Pisces is a very soulful sign, and it's a time when you can kind of fool yourself if you're not careful. So I keep getting that June's going to be important for me. May I please have a reading about why June is so important? Okay. I'm going to do that with traditional tarot. Kind of traditional tarot. I'm going to do it with life is like a board game. These cards look like Monopoly laces, and I love it. It's a fun. Debbie Joyce. So why is June going to be important? Okay. I'm going to go after this, going to flash down and look at how many questions are below this because I know there's a whole lot. And I'll tell you where I'm going to cut it off. And what I may do is uh, continue this reading, this session on Thursday. And the questions that are in the chat that I don't get right now, I will save up and I'll do them on Thursday. Okay. Oh, changes, changes, changes. Okay, it says that someone's been around you and they've been imperious and they've been they've kept you down. They're king of swords, reversed. But you're finding your own shoes. You're finding your own way to get up. And it has to do with work. And you're going to have a moment of glory. Something's going to come out at work where you've worked really hard and it's going to get you away from the oppression of this person. And... A lot of the illusions you've had going on around you are going to melt away. So that's what your June's about. It's breaking free from the influence of someone like that. Okay, let me. Uh, okay, hide. Okay. Uh... At Celtic Seer, you'll love it. I mean, these it's in York. This The bidding room is in York, which is where I have family by marriage in England. And it's the, the stuff they bring is just fascinating. And what it's worth is fascinating. Um, Oh, okay. Uh, I just want to know that your reading was, was so helpful. She was in a car accident with injury. Linda was. A three-month reading indicating freedom starting in April, and she starts her physical therapy today. Good for you, girl. Hang in there. Do it. Do it all. I am feeling much better. I am feeling... Okay, I've only got one more question to answer, and then I've answered all the questions that are in the chat. Show. Imelda, I may have a reading in the summer. I may have my college son and the other in law here at the same time and in my small house. Oh, okay. How's Imelda going to be during that onslaught? And that's kind of the word that the universe gave me. So you're probably not far off in understanding who. You, and it's hard. It's hard for kids, too, because and they're kids and they're coming back from college and you're their parent. And they've been an independent adult. And it's yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let's see, Melda Summer. Okay.
okay. It's always the darkest before the dawn, but it's not going to be as bad as you think it is. That's a ten of swords reversed. It's not the way you would perfectly want it, and there's going to be some things come up. And your son's going to be needy. And uh, he's going to be, and he doesn't want to feel that way. But you guys are going to get past it. You're going to get out of the three of swords, out of the grief of all this. And actually, it's going to be an interesting summer because a lot of stuff that emotionally has been difficult for you, this is the mentally stuck way you're going to get rid of. So even though it's going to be tight and a little intense, it's not going to be all that bad. I mean, you are you at least understand that's what's happening around you. So I know what it's like getting locked up with, in, I actually never lived with my in-laws. Thank God. My in-laws and my second husband, they were old enough to be my grandparents and they were in England and I never even met them. And let's see what we got here at the end. Thank you so much for the reading. Thank you for coming. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be, if I, if I come on Thursday, it's going to be a garden day. It's going to be reading in the garden all day. And I hope that that kind of gives you some insight um, about what's going on around us. And I just remember, this is your eclipse. This is not an eclipse to solve the world's problems or anything else. This is an eclipse for each individual soul to get a chance to look at itself. And with that, I wish you all a blessing. And if you're interested in getting a, a, a crystal compass, those little things I showed you at the beginning, they're up on my website. And like I said, I'm going to be announcing some new ways I'm going to be doing readings. So I hope you'll look into that. And I look forward to seeing you. I'm pretty sure I'm going to do a show on Thursday. Bye-bye.